Every October since 2011, Retro Movie Geek has brought you the spooky side of retro movies. And this year is no different. So join us in our perilous search through darkened and abandoned basements for some perhaps less talked about horror movies from the 1980s. But remember, we spoil the hell out of every movie we cover, so consider yourself forewarned. Flixfest starts now. Welcome to Mom and Pop Video Shop. This is a, a bonus on top of a bonus episode. Um, so when you're seeing this, it will be October, um, and we are knee deep in Spooky Flicks Fest, which uh, I'm here with the one and the only. Chris Seaver, the Seavage. That is me. Yes. And uh, we are going to be talking about actually uh, the whole theme. So I, don't, I think I've told you this, Chris. We do every October since 2011 uh, when we were an audio only podcast. We've done this thing called Spooky Flicks Fest. And we do basically a shit ton of episodes all through October. And we always have a theme. And this year I was kind of lazy on the theme. And it's basically just sort of like mostly forgotten or, or not so talked about 80s horror flicks. Yeah. The movie you and I are covering is not an 80s horror flick, but I will posit that this movie and the reason why i fell in love with it to the degree that i did when i saw it is is so is a movie that in 1990 let's just say you'd have gone to your local video store and it would have been on the shelf just one one or two copies of it and you'd be like oh what's this and you would have watched it and like it is it is a pre postmodern horror flick like this is a movie that is completely lacking in all the self-awareness BS that we've gotten since Scream, and I love Scream, but I feel like so much horror is, you know, kind of does the whole postmodern thing. This movie does not. And when I found it, you were also a fan, which I found out because uh, on your channel, it crept from the 80s, you were doing a, a walkthrough of your, I think it was your horror room, right? Yeah. And I saw your malignant poster, and I too have a malignant poster, and I was like, uh-oh, is is Chris a a malignant lover like myself? The only other person I know that loves it like I do is my buddy Kevin Spencer. He's an artist and he also loves it as uh, as insanely as I do. So, I found out you're a malignant fan, and uh, I was like, "Oh, buddy, we got we got to talk about this movie." Damn right. Yes. So first time I see you wearing a malignant shirt. Where'd you get that? Because I'm wearing a Chud shirt, which is not as cool. Uh, I cannot remember where I got. That. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I believe it was just one of those t-shirt insta, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. like a pops up cavity colors slash fright rags, yeah, slash gutter garbs adjacent company, you know. Yes, yeah. Um, and I think it was a like a twenty-four hour thing. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, one of those. Um, yeah, but I can't remember who it was. Yeah, and I haven't seen it since. And um, in fact, I'm kind of like upset there isn't more stuff I, yeah i i go on etsy and you can find some things there's things that i'm like that are in my wish list that are malignant stuff and i'm mm -hmm. like okay this these guys get it yeah um but there isn't like a a lot of shit i i was recently at horror hound and somebody had made a six inch gabriel figure oh with her and him that's cool. You know, um, but it was handmade and it actually looked really great. And it had its own like Mego box and everything. Really? That's cool. But it was like $130. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. That, I, that's cool from a distance. <laughs> well, I almost, I almost did it. Yeah. You know, I had a budget um, and there was so much that I wanted. So I had yeah. to like, pick and choose. But yeah, um, it was cool. Yeah, you know, if it was like fifty bucks, I would have, <laughs> I would have done it. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, the real right. I mean, other than the poster, obviously, uh, I'm assuming you have it as well. I got, I got the, got the Blu-ray. One thing I know, I think you would appreciate. So there's uh, uh, some folks that I've gotten to know at various cons locally, and they're out of, they're not in Tampa, but they're in that vicinity. Uh, it's called Brainbuster Video. Oh yeah, and, are yeah. you familiar with Brainbuster? I love. Yeah, Brainbuster. they 
they're fans of Terra Blood Fart Lake, and they did their oh. own Terra Blood Fart Lake. Dude, yeah, they're they're fantastic. They're great people. They're awesome, and they, and they do tons of obviously VHS. And I got the malignant uh, VHS box that they did, and it's got the hold on, let me see here. It's got a sticker of let me see if I can. I, the sticker's pretty small, so I don't know if it'll show up or not. Comes with a sticker. Let's see here, little little tiny sticker, and then you got the 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 red tape itself but what's cool yeah. is hypothetically hypothetically of course the movie might be also included hypothetically theoretically not actually because i would be wrong um sure. and they and they hypothetically put thematically appropriate trailers at the beginning so it's like all james wan trailers and if ever there was a movie that is a modern film that when you watch it on vhs just fits perfectly it is freaking malignant. I don't know what it, it, it looked so much better to me, even in, in VHS for me. It, it was crazy. So highly recommend the uh, brain buster uh, copy of that. If you, if you are so inclined, but yeah, for, to, for me, it is a eighties, nineties. Yes. In a modern visual aesthetic. You know yes. what I mean? Like, yes, it's a, it, but it's at 100% an eighties and nineties. Oh, movie. totally. The moment, it, and by the way, those that are listening, if you've not seen Malignant, we're going to obviously spoil the crap out of this movie. So yeah. I, 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 I'm going to give you the heads up now. This is one of those. I, Because when I went into it, I'm a moron who didn't see it coming. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't. I, I knew there was something going on. With, but when it happens, and now you know the, the scene, the, the, the police station, that whole sequence, I, I was like, I love this movie so much. I love this movie so much. <laughs> So if you haven't seen it, cut this off, go watch it and then come back. Uh, but uh, because we're going to obviously have to talk about this movie, you kind of have to let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. Um, but I think the other thing I knew I loved about it is when the sister goes to the asylum, the abandoned asylum in the middle of the night, parks her car on the edge of a cliff, a la, a la some gothic, goes in, is like going through and everything's like perfectly still, all the records, are, it's like, it's that thing that if you, yeah, you overthink it, you're going to be like, what the hell? Like, the, no, but that's, that's what great horror back in the day. They didn't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Somebody just shows up. There's tape. Yeah. The tape, no dust on them. <laughs> it's just there. Pop it right in the VCR. So you could get the exposition out of the way of what happened with uh, Gabriel and, and Emily uh, as she was known at that time. So um, did you get to see this in the theater when it came out? I did not. Um, I kept, it was one of those movies that where I was like, man, I, I got to get out there to see this. I really want to see this. Yeah. Um, and I don't watch full trailers. Mm -hmm. I just watch teasers. Mm -hmm. um, so I really didn't see much of this. Um, and I hadn't heard really, you know, anybody talking about it. Um, and then we must have, I think when it hit, max maybe yeah i think it was max first or right? i had or it was a rental night for us on you know vod or something because i watched it with my wife katie mm -hmm. uh you know as i guess as soon as it hit vod or or max or something like that i think it was vod because sometimes mm -hmm. we'll we'll just splurge and do the yeah okay it's 20 bucks you know, I want to see it. Let's just do it. Um, so I think it was that. So it was probably like, you know, two or three weeks after the movie was in, you know, in theaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went pretty quickly. Um, and from the get go. I had a giant smile on my face. I was I I, I got what he was doing immediately. Like mm -hmm. that opening scene in the oh yes the hospital, oh yes i was like this this is like fucking like a brian usna like, yeah, re re like i got reanimator vibes like it reminded yeah, me they were opening yeah, a reanimator so yeah. like yes <laughs> yes 88 to like 91 like yes this is, wow and i'm smiling and i'm yep. like looking at katie and i'm giggling at <laughs> 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 And I, I am looking at this movie with like giant eyes and I'm just like eating it all up, like 100% eating it up. It's funny because Katie was, she's really good at just figuring shit out. So very early on, she's just like, 
I bet it's like a weird twin, you know, like, <laughs> and I'm, but I'm still like, not, I don't care. Cause I want to be like, yeah, I want the story to just sort of flow. Mm -hmm. Um, so if it was that great, I don't care. I'm like, I want to see the reveal and everything. Um, but yeah, I just, I love the whole thing. I was, you know, clapping in my seat and like, you know, I was just so, <laughs> I loved it. Yes. And what I did was I loved it so much that I I just started to show anybody who would watch it, you know. So <laughs> if they came over, I'd be like, man, have you seen Malignant? You know, and it sucked because nobody was reacting to it the way yep. that I did. Yep. You know, and people that I thought would. Yep. were just kind of like, I don't know how to feel about that. You know, yep. like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Well, it's, it's funny, and I'm not going to throw him under the bus because he couldn't be here. Tyson, Tyson's one of those people for me because Tyson, I sometimes, and usually it's the other way. Like I do that thing where I'll pump myself up for a movie and I'll go see it and convince myself it didn't really suck that bad. Yeah, new screen movies. I'm kind of looking at you, um, and and I and I basically will come out of it like higher than I end up. Like you know, months later, I'm like, you know. No, I think about it. I've had no desire to rewatch that movie. And, eh, you know, and, and he's usually a little bit more like in like, I think good at knowing what he actually likes. and doesn't like, but I thought he'd like it because he likes some weird crap. So I'm like, oh, you'll love it. And he said, he didn't hate it. You didn't hate it. He's kind of like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I would be. Yeah, it's this movie's fantastic. And then, like I said, my only other buddy that got i think really got this movie was kevin spencer like he just was down with it because i so i got to see this in the theater in fact this was the first movie i got to see in the theater post covid stuff so wow. it, it was like it, it was playing in the theater i hadn't even seen a trailer and as tyson can attest to i am i have a problem it's like it's like a almost like a OCD level compulsion for watching trailers when I know I shouldn't because they just end up pissing me off because they give away too much. Yeah. And I should do like, and I, what I try to do is what you do is either a teaser or like the first 30 seconds. So I get the vibe, I get the tone, I get the feel, but I'm not given the entire damn movie. Yeah. Um, but I hadn't even seen anything. Like I just knew this was James Wan's new movie. Um, I like James Wan stuff. I'm not, I'm not somebody who like goes like insane for like the whole conjuring universe and all that crap. But I love Saw, the original Saw, and I'm like, okay, I will give this, I'll get, I'll give this a shot. Let's let's check this. I, I liked it. Was a death sentence he did. Uh, I'm trying to think what what are some non is not oh it's dead silence. I remember not, I remember liking it. It was fine. Um, so I, I saw the poster for this. I knew it was a horror flick. I knew it was James Wan. I was like, let's go sight unseen. Oh my god! Like I like you like that opening. I was like, oh my god, this is what is happening. This is nuts. This is great. But like, I, and it's like it just kept building for me and building and building. And when the when the sister ended up at the asylum, I was like, oh, I get this. I told that was the moment I was like, I know. Yeah, this is an because James Wan is no dummy. Like you know what I mean? Like he he knows how to like that. People are going to be like, wait a minute, why would people? Why would she be going? He didn't care. Didn't care. He's like, no, this is what would, in this movie from when this movie would be taking place in like 1990. <laughs> this is exactly how this would transpire. And yeah. just, but then the whole cop, you know, sequence, that whole thing was just so, and I often say that um, a malignant feels like a Nick Cage movie without Nick Cage. <laughs> like it, it just, just the level of like bonkers it goes. Um, I, I just, yeah, I, I love it, dude. I freaking. I'm with you. Like when I saw you had the poster, I'm like, okay, he doesn't just like, but no one has the malignant poster hanging in their home. If they just kind of liked it, you got to yeah. love it. I'm definitely the only guy in my circle who, who just like loves it, like goes gaga for it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so after I saw it, I started like posting about it, like everywhere. I was just like, this movie is, I mean, you know, I was like, oh, my God, it's like a modern 80s masterpiece. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I was yeah, like, yep. I was like this. I, I, I was like, I feel bad for people who don't get it. Um, you know, I was like, maybe you have to be a certain age. But for me, it was I knew exactly what he was doing and blah, blah, blah. I was like, kudos. And then he James Wan started to message me <laughs> and, I, and I kept everything. Uh huh. And so we have a, a chain where we're just talking to each other. Yeah. Um, and uh, 
and we still talk. That's cool. Because. Because you get it. <laughs> yeah, because he's like, hey, man, because we're we're the same age. Mm hmm. Um, let me let me get it. While, while you're doing that, I'll say so Malignant came out in September 10th of 2021, which is funny because only because I, we, I know I saw it opening weekend and uh, proving that my my wife is a saint. They, that would have been the same weekend of our uh, anniversary of the day we met. We met September 11th, 1993. When we were 17 on a blind date and the uh, next day after meeting her, I had already seen a certain movie and I had loved it. And I was convinced in my 17 year old mind that she would as well. And that movie was true romance because it was the same weekend true romance opened. And so I took her to see it. And so for years, I thought she loved it as much as I did. Cause like, that was our first movie together. And then one day she, I, I was like, Oh yeah, true. She's like, yeah, it's fine. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I thought you loved it as much as I did. So uh, but needless to say, I just realized I took her opening weekend to see Malignant. And here's the thing. She didn't hate it, but my wife does that thing where she's not as, and she likes horror and stuff, but she's not, I, I, when it comes to certain movies, what it is, she just knows to just let me have my weird <laughs> stuff. You know what I mean? And she's like, that's nice. That's nice, honey. You enjoy that. That's, that's uh cause I asked her, if she wanted to rewatch it with me for, uh, before we recorded this. And she's like, mm, I'm good. <laughs> it's like, okay, fine. My kids watched it though, and they freaking loved it. They thought it was great. So I, I I could say that the the future is bright. I have three teenagers that saw Malignant and they enjoyed it for what it is. And they also, but these are my my kids also love Doctor Giggles. <laughs> I yeah, I can see that there's text. He's brought the receipts, folks. He has brought the receipts. The the James the James Wan back and forth. So how did that start off? Did he's like. Thank you for getting it. <laughs> uh, he goes, thank you. And we're the same age. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I write, I tell him all this shit. Uh, he goes, ha ha. Thank you, kind sir. You get it because we're the same age, same generation. Yep. Most of the young generation just didn't get it. They yep. thought they were getting another conjuring or jump scare movie. Nope. Yep. Instead, they got an eighties VHS throwback movie. Yeah. That embraced old school prosthetics and makeup. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. And then we just, you know. We just... Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That And that is why. And I and I felt that when I was watching it. So I think it might be generational. Because I'm only a couple years older than you are. So. Yeah. Well, I'm 47. I'm You're... 48. So I'm only a year older than you. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah. We're the same age. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what it is. It's like you. You. If you were a kid who would go to, you know, your local video store and you'd rent everything. You rent the mainstream new releases, but then, you know, you read in Fango about Dr. Giggles or whatever. And you had to get that. I mean, I saw that opening weekend for God's sake in the theater. Um, another one I thought, I, this is before I met my wife. I took a different girl who didn't end up uh, staying with me very long because uh, I took her to things like Dr. Giggles. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you either, you either get that or it's not for you and that's fine. I totally understand that. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I think the other thing about Malignant is that it's over the top, but there's uh, there and, and, and it's like, I feel like there's a, an awareness on Juan's part, obviously, that he knew what he was making. 100%. And you can tell that with the acting and the dialogue. Yeah. Like, it is pure cheese. But it's not played for laughs. You know what I'm saying? No, like, I feel like it's played like those movies were. Yes. Yeah, very serious for the like the characters in that world, it's life or death. Right? Yeah. It's life or death. But the things that they're saying to those of us in the, on this side of reality is just bananas. It made <laughs> me think a lot of uh Nightmare 4. Oh yeah. Yep, it has and that. Yes. The interactions between Freddy and Alice. Alice, yeah. Uh yeah. and and certainly near the end when they they have that like you know, back and forth yes where she traps him and she's she's doing that style of acting and everything yeah. oh yeah oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm like i am loving this yeah oh yeah and it's funny too because in your opinion you know being a horror fan and whatnot why do you think no one goes back i mean i guess probably because uh they make a movie like malignant and it only makes 34 million instead of four. I think it was a 40 million dollar movie. And that's the only thing. It does have a really big budget. I, I, I would have, I mean, I get it because it's, I mean, it is, you know, really well shot and the effects are great. Um, 
but that probably was the problem. Like if they'd done it for like 10 million, <laughs> they probably, you know, they'd have tripled their money and they were like, ah, it's a huge hit. But because it's 40 million and it makes barely doesn't really make its budget back. Wah, wah. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, I miss that, that, that style. I think almost like, you know what it is? I wonder if there's a sincerity thing. It's a sincerity problem. And what I mean by that is you go back and watch something, even like, and I know this is a ridiculous movie to bring up. I don't care. Leprechaun. I think you and I have discussed. We both like Leprechaun, right? Yes. Very, yeah. Uh, I, I, another one I saw opening weekend. I have the gutter garb shirt. I think it was gutter garb that put it out. I mean, I, I really dig Leprechaun. But even within the context of how ridiculous that freaking movie is, and I'm sure when they were making it, every time they'd say cut, they'd laugh their asses off. But it goes back to they weren't afraid to be sincere in the moment of what they were doing. You know what I mean? It's like the, it, it lacks that that cynical sort of like wink wink to the audience like we're we're not dumb we're not gonna we're you know it's like willing to be cringe as, as the kids say right it's, it's willing to be like dr giggles is that way and dr giggles is filled with puns and everything else but even then when the horror parts happen you know they're ridiculous but they're still played legit they're played like horror so i don't know i just feel like that's what i loved about this movie too is there's a sincerity yeah. in the over the topness of it if that makes sense. Well, that was a lot of that was a lot of the 80s for sure. Yeah. Um 100%. And in the early 90s as it got yeah. As it got uh you know more into the 90s uh, yeah, yeah yeah. And yeah. The, and uh, but you know, yeah, even you know, I I look at movies like Night of the Creeps um yeah. or The Monster Squad. I mean, Fred Decker those two movies are extremely self-aware of what yes. they are. But they're sincere. But, yes, it's it's not pushed in your face. Yeah, you know. And at that time, certainly for me, um, you didn't see that a lot. Yeah, you know, maybe Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. You know, Tom McLaughlin, one hundred percent self aware, and he's poking fun at the genre yeah. and Friday the Thirteenth within the film. Yeah. And he's doing it the right way, as far as I'm concerned. Yep, it's very. And he's still yes. delivering a kick-ass yes. movie. It's sincere, yeah. though. It's very sincere, and that's what it's like. Um, another uh, another one of my favorites. It's it's horror adjacent, I guess you would say. Night of the Comet. If I love that movie, dude. One of my all-time favorite movies of all time. Um, to the point where I own uh, uh teenagecometzombies.com. I haven't done anything with it, but I we what my one of the first interviews I ever got to do was Kelly Maroney and. She said she did a drop for us saying that. And I just don't know when I was like, huh, I wonder if teenage comet zombies.com is available. Son of a bitch, it is. <laughs> so I've owned it for years just because. So my point is, this is a, a, what I'm talking about. It's like there's a sense, it's ridiculous, obviously, but it's so sincere. Like they're they meet like the characters really mean it you know yeah. like the actors are in the moment while they're doing it and yes they're delivering these ridiculous lines in this ridiculous circumstance but there's never that and i think if if memory serves you're on the not as big a fan of scream side of things if memory serves right i i straight up do not like scream that's right okay so nothing scream i am a fan of the original scream as, as you know but i will say the problem starts for me there because it becomes because it was such a big hit, it becomes this thing where everybody's got to be meta and self aware. But it's not self aware like this is self aware. Yeah. It's it's that cynical, ironic, faux hipster self aware. You know what I mean? Like that, that. Like oh, we're too cool to actually be. And so it's ironic. Like we watch this movie because it's bad. Ironically, we don't really yeah. like it. We hate it. Actually, we're just gonna mock it relentlessly. It's like no man. Like when I say I enjoyed watching some sov movie and look i'm not an idiot obviously it's an sov movie like zombie army i'm watching zombie army i know it's a high, high art yeah but i still appreciate it and i there's something about it and the effort involved i just dig and i get not everybody thinks that way i get that yeah. but but i just i don't know that that's something i would love to return to is that sincerity in, in the face of the absurd yeah i think it's you know, again, it's probably just the writer and director who's going to do it. It's got to yeah. be the, the right person to do it and yeah. with the balls to do it. Yeah. You know? Which James Wan at least had the balls to do it. Yeah. 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 And studios to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you're not getting a lot of that. Yeah. And you know what? Say say what you will. As I know, there's some people that like don't like the Conjuring movies and all that kind of stuff. That's fine. 
but dude, that guy took his, his, what are they called? A chit where you have like, you know, you've earned the, 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 the weight to do what you want to do. And he takes his, his chit with the, with the studio and says, you know what? Yeah. You know, all these, these movies that make you money. You want me to keep making them for you. Right. I want to make a movie about a, a, a woman who thinks she's having visions. And it turns out the whole time. She's got a parasitic twin, a la South Park, on the back of her skull. <laughs> and they were like, you know, there was the executives were, um, are, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure you want to do that? Are you, are you sure? Uh, I love I respect the hell out of that guy for doing that. That is amazing. Yeah. I yeah. love it. You know, it, and it, I, it's very, you know, it gave me reanimator vibes. It yes. Gave me Brian using the vibes. It gave me, there's a movie I love. Not everybody likes this movie or even heard about it, but it's called The Dark Backward. I don't, I don't even know if I know what that is. Hold on. It's, I got to look it up. The Dark it's Backward. Bill, Bill Paxton and. and uh, The Dark Backward. I John love it when Nelson. someone does it. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, I just found it. 1991. I like that era. Yeah. See. So, and not to give anything away, but <laughs> John yeah. Nelson has an arm that starts growing out of his back. <laughs> oh, how have and I never heard of this movie? Hold on. So we got, we got, let's see here. We got, uh, I'm going to add it to the screen so people can see it. Okay. So this is it, right? Yeah. And we got uh, garbage man. Marty tries his hand at stand up comedy. and fails miserably, miserably until he adds the third arm to his act that mysteriously grew out of his back. Oh dear God. I am going to watch this yeah, as soon as we uh, get off this call. It's an Adam Rifkin movie. Um, wow. I rented it so many times as a teen. Um, How have I never even heard of this, dude? It's got, it's got Wayne, Wayne Newton, Newton in it. Yeah, James yeah. Conn, Laura uh, Flynn Boyle, Rob Lowe, Claudia and, Christian. And Holy Bill God. Bill Paxton is the most Bill Paxton you see. Like, oh, he really? is straight up pure, weird, off the wall. Bill like Paxton. Severin, like Severin and Near Dark, but amped but, up even higher but fun but like goofy okay you know like <laughs> oh that's awesome that's uh, awesome yeah but it, i mean it gave so it gave me that vibe um yeah i just i don't know man i, I love this movie yeah but, uh, i will tell you because you made the comment about how good it looks on screen and I will just suggest to you that if you get the VHS, <laughs> because of you know the nature of the medium, um, it it actually enhanced it in a way for me because yeah. because it's 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 you know four three they had to crop it you know and it just because of the low lo fi aesthetic it just added to the whole thing like it it confirmed like any suspicion you had this is an eighties throwback watch it on VHS man. I was actually surprised. I mean, I guess because again, it didn't do as well at the box office. They're not going to put much marketing effort in, but I feel like that would have been a thing they could have done. They just put it out <laughs> on VHS. It's just a little, you know, niche thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's so great. I do so, have that in my Etsy's, you know, wish, like my cart, my. Yeah. Do, do you uh, ever, do you share that wish list with Pete, with your friends to get you stuff for Christmas or you? Um, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, um it's never like a you know i don't require it yeah yeah like yeah, thing, but yeah so yes, if you're people getting me do, something yeah people get into it and they have access to all my wish lists on amazon and everything and <laughs> i mean that's how i basically get a lot of the shit that i get i just mm -hmm. wait because i don't like to spend a lot of money um yeah and certainly not on bigger items that's all for my wife to do she likes doing that sure uh, but yeah, it's out there for people and every once in a while, you know, it's like, Ooh, I can check that off. That's amazing. Thank you. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's uh, you know, what's crazy, dude. I just looked up the dark backward. Holy crap, bro. So <laughs> VHS, the cheapest I'm seeing is 40 bucks. Wow. And the cheapest DVD. So obviously it's out of print 50, well, 47 99. This is the cheap 65, a hundred dollars. And it's not available streaming. It's one of those. So I'm going to have to, uh, Get see if uh, I, I, I one of my friends that likes to sail the seven seas because yeah. <laughs> normally I don't do that, but I'm sorry if you're going to make it to where I can't get a hold of something without having to break the bank, which don't bro, I'm sure I'll love it. Probably won't end up buying it anyway, but um, 
I had that thing, and I think maybe you can relate to this. Like, I could technically buy that. Could technically, I could. But it feels so much more satisfying to go to like a flea market or garage sale and find it for two dollars and know that that's what that's worth. You know what I mean? That's so much more satisfying to me than spending the money. It's funny, like maybe maybe a decade ago, um, I got the DVD for a bunch of people for Christmas that I thought would like appreciate. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and I think only like one person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think my buddy Alec plays Lance and everything. He he was he was like, "This looking rot," <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, everyone I, else was like, "What was with that movie?" Yeah. So I will tell you, uh, it is. Uh, I don't want to jinx it. It may, if it's an hour and thirty-eight minutes long, it may be on YouTube. I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. So, um, and and for those of us that may or may not have one of those like YouTube video downloader thingies, um, <laughs> yeah, they may be in the middle of this recording, copying and pasting URLs. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Because I really want to see this movie badly, dude. Thank you. I there's is there anything better though when somebody recommends a movie that you didn't even know existed, and you're like, where have you been all my life? Well, it's better when it's good. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but good, good being a very relative word, right? Like I acknowledge a lot of the stuff that I like love unironically isn't for everybody. Like I get that, but when I truly love it, man. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yes. There's yeah. also another mo a movie that I always pushed upon my friends growing up uh, was Tape Heads. I know Tape Heads. I have not seen it, but I know it. That one uh, I know. It's it's uh, John Cusack and, yes. and Tim Robbins. Yes. And it's yeah. fucking funny and it's weird. Yeah. And it's a true blast. And. I have so many tape head things. I've got, I've got like memorabilia. And yeah. I just got a, like a, a 50 by 30 poster, original poster of it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, but I would, that's one of the, another one of those movies that I would always push on like friends and shit. And yeah, half would, one. half would be all about it. And half would be like this. No, I'll, I'll never watch this again. You know? Yeah. Um, it's funny. It was just, you know, Similar to me pushing malignant on people, um, that movie um, "No One Will Save You." Oh, the the Hulu one. Yeah. Oh, dude, that was in my top ten. I last year. flipped for that. Dude, movie. me too. Loved and it. I've seen it so many times, and a lot of that is because I would show people, mm -hmm. and I would get the same thing. Like they were like, "Yeah, dude. I don't, I don't and, know." Especially the I had so many people annoyed that I recommended it with the ending. I'm like, oh. "No, I love the ending." What are you talking I, yeah. about? Me too. God, dude. See, Chris, I'm telling you, brother from another mother, we're going to get along just fine. Because I did. Yeah. That was in my top 10 for the late. We have to, I hate doing top 10 lists, but I do it for my buddy Jay. I'm on his, uh, Jay of the Dead's new horror movies, and he always makes us do a top 10. So for 2023, that one, I, I, I sometimes feel like I have to like, like put movies on there that in any normal circumstance would not be like top 10 movies, but it's like, I didn't get to see like some of the, some of the guys I do podcasts with see like every damn thing that comes down the pike. I'm like, well, it makes it a lot easier for you to make a list. Um, but, uh, but you know, uh, you, uh, was that Godzilla minus one? I really love, I don't know if you saw Godzilla minus one, but I freaking oh, yeah. love that movie. I yeah. loved it so much. It's my number one, uh, evil dead rise. Loved it. That was my number two. It was almost my number one until Godzilla minus one. Um, and then, um, uh, no one will save you. I think was in my, I had to check again. Maybe I know it was in my top five, at least if not my number three. Yeah. I loved it. Loved it. Such a great movie. Yeah, her performance and just the fact there's no dialogue and uh, uh it's so freaking great, dude. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. I loved always, it. I'm always bummed out when like people are just like, eh, yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Especially one that it's because here's the thing. I get if somebody if I recommend, I don't know. I'm guess this is gonna be totally arbitrary, but Jurassic Park, yeah. and you're like, eh, I'm not into dinosaurs. I don't like Spielberg. What? Okay, fine. But it's a very mainstream normie movie. That's Clint. Uh, is he doesn't like Jurassic Park. He does not like Jurassic. Oh, I have to really give a give a tell him that I saw that 19 times in the theater on first run. He is not a <laughs> he is not a dinosaur guy. Not a dinosaur guy. Okay. Well, I love Jurassic Park, but that is I'm setting that aside. I yeah. get why it's like a very normie. Fine, whatever. But then there's those movies, like you're saying, like you just you know you have this like profound appreciation and you but you're also self-aware enough to get 
you're kind of weird <laughs> and people oh, yeah. aren't going to get it. That's it. So, but, but, then but that's you, the thing though. Everyone I hang out with are weirdos. Yeah. So I'm like, why you didn't did, you like you get this? this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like I get why nobody, and, and we have this thing on our show called CND cinematic nostalgia disorder. Which is so you grew up watching a movie, and as a kid, you just have no discretion whatsoever. So you just like everything, you know. I just remember liking. I I didn't if I didn't understand something in a movie, I assumed I was at fault, not the filmmaker for not making it clear, you know. And, and then you grow up as, and you're like, you watch a movie, you're like, oh, oh, that really wasn't my fault. That was just bad writing. Um, but there are many movies where you'll see it as an adult, and you know that adult part of your brain's like, yeah, this is hot garbage i know everybody hates this but you don't care you're like you're still defended like a, a good example of this for me is and i don't know why munchies i know munchies is total tripe i get it but i don't care i still love it yeah and i uh, i have an arnold a, a arnold replica right here behind me i <laughs> mine is you know garbage pail kids i like yes i know i know garbage pail kids i i will say I weird because I saw that in the theater when it came out. I was a massive fan of collecting those damn cards as a kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's like I tried to rewatch it a few years ago, and sometimes things catch you and you're in a bad mood. And I just remember it kind of annoying me. But then I have a feeling if I watched it with someone else, I would like I know if I rewatch it with my kids because my kids will because they're they're teenagers, you know. So, but they'll get into some of this. Like we watched Doctor Giggles, and they were like over the moon. I, they thought the puns were amazing, <laughs> you know. So uh, I, I feel like if we watch Garbage Trail Kids the movie, it's obviously not a, a, a major achievement in cinema. It's, it's terrible. It's horrible. The movie's terrible. But, but that I, song and John John Carl Beekler's Garbage Trail Kids make it all worthwhile to I, me. I can't, I can't quit it. I can't yeah, quit it. yeah, yeah. And what? what and just the fact that the kid is McKenzie. Uh, Aston, Aston. right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, is, is, he, is he Sean Aston's half brother or something? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and so uh, the fact that he's uh, Dodger is that, I'm, I'm literally pulling this out of my ass right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Dodger, it's like he's a kid and then Tanger is it Tangerine? And tangerine. Yes. Right. Tangerine. Yes. But she looks like she's 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, and, so and, the, just, and her boyfriend, fucking yeah. her, you know. Yeah. He looks like he's 35. And then they're, but they're like with this kid. It's just like the whole dynamic. And I remember there's like a scene where he's like in the bathtub. It's a, you know, <laughs> it's a weird movie, man. It's a, another one that hit me. We had this thing called retroactive CND, which is where you didn't see the movie as a kid, right? But you see it as an adult. And you had the reaction that you and I are talking about, like you had with Malignant in a weird way. Or um, uh, I, I have a feeling, and I don't want to jinx it because I'm really truly hoping I love it as much as uh, I think I will. But you're the dark backward. Like I could see that being a retroactive C and D type of movie for me, but my demon lover with Scott Valentine was <laughs> yeah. totally that. Cause I remember that poster hanging at the video store as a kid and yeah. wondering, cause I knew I love family ties and I knew that was Nick. And I thought, Oh, yeah. what is this? And I thought it was some kind of, you know, thing I wasn't going to be allowed to see or something. I was a little kid. And then, and then years go by and I never saw it. And it wasn't something that was as available, I guess for a while. I finally watched it a handful of years ago and oh my God, did I love that movie? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I don't know why I loved it as much as I did, but I did retroactive C and D. So, um, but yeah, certain movies hit you. Certain movies don't. Yeah. I'd rather yeah. just have, I guess at this point, I just want to have fun watching a movie. You know what I mean? I just wanted to enjoy, enjoy myself as long as entertainment above all else. Like just entertain me. I'm, I'm interested to see what you think of dark backward. You know, good because it, it is an acquired taste. Okay, we'll see. We'll see if I have the palate to handle a Chris Seaver suggested movie. The very and, fact that I like Malignant. Check out Malignant. Tape Heads. Okay, yeah, and that one I know. Like I know that title. I've seen the poster. I've seen year for years. I just, another one I never have, and I actually have it on VHS. Um, oh crap, Daniel Roebuck, the punk movie. Why am I brain farting? Come uh, on, Robert. Uh, dudes dudes thank you yes i have a friend that loves dudes and has recommended it and it's like on the list of things i need to watch that i never got to yeah. um and i feel like that's and is it penelope spheris was she the director of that i think uh, she might have been it was somebody so. like that yeah yeah it's got i don't the whole like the movie but oh okay okay uh but i i know that's another one that's always kind of been in the ether that i just never got to that's why we were talking to somebody recently and, I, and he was like apologized because he, he had never seen duel i'm like you can't see everything man like, yeah. you know, there's always so many hours in a freaking day, and especially as kids. I don't know about you. I was the kind of kid that we would go rent, like, munchies, um, weird science, 
Uh, you know, I remember running offbeat several times for some godforsaken reason. Um, but you ran them like multiple times. Like I'd watch the same movie 30 yeah. times. And, and so when you do that, it sort of limits the, uh, I think it was it Norm MacDonald that, that said he had, it's like some people have like a, a really deep knowledge of movies. He has like a very wide, but shallow of like, like about five. <laughs> there's, like, there's like five movies he knew really well. I mean, I know a lot about movies, but it's the movies that I give a shit about, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm not as a kid, I didn't watch dramas and I didn't watch, uh, you know, like things that are like normal life and, mm -hmm. you know, struggles and all that shit. I just don't watch. I don't watch to this day. I didn't watch as yeah. a teenager. I watched genre. And yeah. that's that's what I did. So when I was going to the video store, I was picking out the weird shit and all the fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, while my family was picking out the boring shit, <laughs> as far <laughs> as I was concerned. Yeah. You know, um, the at least the you know not my mom and uncles because they're they're what got me into all this dumb shit. But yeah, um, yeah. I just uh, so you know, I'm not one of those kids who like oh yeah I saw. Steel magnolias or whatever the fuck or glory yeah, yeah. or anything. Yes. Cause yeah. like, no, I, I didn't care. Like we have, yeah. we have a running joke on, on uh, retro movie geek with Daryl, especially. So he, he loves movies like that, which <laughs> cracks me up. And, and you know, this guy's from New York, you know, he seems very dour sometimes. And I'm like, but he loves like these effing like Southern women dramas. I don't, I, yeah. And so we, we cover it. Now here's the thing. As I've gotten old, like there's certain movies I, have like like I like there's certain dramas I love like Sling Blade I freaking love that movie. Um, yeah, I, would, it, I would never watch that. See, I love Sling Blade. So I there are good now there are dramas that I've gotten angry about too. Like I uh, I was I don't know if you ever watched Seinfeld, but there was a bit with Oops. Elaine. Okay, Elaine hated oh. the English patient. I was yeah. Elaine because when the English patient came out, I would everybody I told I we, my wife and I had gone to see it and I hated it so profoundly. <laughs> I didn't understand why everyone loved it. I thought the people in it were horrible. I hated everything about it. And I would just go on these rants about the English patient. Um, so at, when I was younger, especially like they uh, loved to bust my balls. Cause I didn't watch like those, like, those nighttime soap operas in the eighties, like dynasty or Falcon crest. I never watched any of that shit. Yeah. I was a team night writer. My you know, we did. Yeah, see, my, my, I don't even think my family did because I don't remember that being on. But I, I was not that kid. No, me know? either. And that's why I think it's so funny. I'm like, dude, I never watched Hill Street Blues. I never watched any of that stuff. Now, as yeah. I've gotten older, I'll watch a lot of like crime stuff and things like that. Now, and movies like I'm very particular, like with uh, like Scorsese. I love Scorsese films. I love Taxi Driver, and Goodfellas, and I mean, I get, I get. It. It's not genre, um, but the the me. art and the aesthetic of them, I just dig. Uh, although as he's gotten older, I'm like them less and less <laughs> so there's that um but uh but yeah i I've, I've definitely adapted but what i have found is and and honestly it's been a relative recent phenomenon for me to like rediscover like thanks to you and some other folks like uh, like getting back to like remembering like oh that's right sob that was like a real thing and i i freaking i forgot how much i love watching this stuff like you know what i mean like it just re-watching it and i bought the uh the sob six pack from book walter uh when he was doing his um kickstarter for side yeah. effects may vary and i because one of my friends had it's like oh yeah i don't think he makes it anymore and he offered it for like a limit i was like oh i'm getting that so I, i'm watching all of the it's just it's just fun you know what i mean they're just fun so um but that but that is why malignant will forever hold a place in my heart. Like, yeah, given my druthers behind, whether I'm going to watch Malignant or like Killers of the Flower Moon, I don't think it's, I, well, I got upside down. I, I don't think it's up for debate. I'm watching <laughs> Malignant. Yeah. 100%. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, so any other thoughts about uh, that movie or other movies like it? Um. So my thing with it, uh, it's like, I'm kind of sad because this is the type of movie where I want to see sequels. Mm -hmm. you know i yeah. i do i want to see more gabriel yep i i want it to be like a friday the 13th or nightmare on elm street thing yep to carry on that that feel and or at least eight. basket case you know we got three and basket cases we should at least get three <laughs> yeah yeah you know yeah. we won't we i know we won't. will but there's also something special about this gem that was yep. just so perfect you know yep. that it's it's just what it is um and it and i'm happy we got it 
you know? Yeah. Uh, so, because I think, I just think it's great. And I love Gabriel. I love that whole thing. Yeah. I, I love, I just love the fucking movie. I think it's fantastic. My, one of my kids said his only gripe, because he didn't get, he didn't guess until it's revealed that Gabriel is this parasitic twin hanging from the back of her skull. Um, he was upset because he liked the idea of Gabriel being his own thing yeah. as a killer. And see, that's where you go with a sequel, right? Is somehow Gabriel breaks free. Well, that's what I think. It, yeah. it, it would be similar to like a Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Where the, okay, the genie's out of the bottle now. Yes. You know, the madman is out. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. how, how is he? How is he? Out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now you got to explain it. Yeah. Uh, so that, I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's a sad thing. But I, like I said, I'm so happy we have it. Yeah. Um, and I will continue to show people who have not seen it and, yep. and hope to find someone. Listen, I know Clint loves it. I yeah. know Andrew loves it and things like that, but they don't love it. Like I do. Yeah. You know? I gotcha. Yeah. Like uh, that, like with a passion. Yeah. Know? Where I could watch it, you know, any day of the week. Yeah. And it's definitely, like, a ha I would have it on in the background. Yeah. I'm a hundred percent. Just have it on, catch, catch some scenes, smile. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, uh, it's funny because, that idea of it okay it didn't do well and we are going to get sequels but also they're at least not anytime soon there's a, there's no chance of them remaking it and tainting yeah. it there's no chance of them just it, it's weirdly like because it is what it is it will always just be there you know what i mean it won't get tainted in any way it'll be what it is and i kind of love that I, I get what you're saying. And I get, and I agree with you. I wish there could be sequels, but the fact that they won't milk it because they don't see any financial reason yeah. to milk it. And it is also annoying because how often horror fans, especially we complain about, Oh, nothing's new. We never get anything new. Well, damn it. You got something new right here. I'm new. not one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying, but you, know, you hear that a lot. There's, I, oh, I, 100%. I, but yeah. I, I, you could give me, 85 Friday the 13th movies and I'll watch them. You oh yeah, I mean? of course. Uh, that's the, that's the irony of, of the horror. A lot of horror fans is that we say that, <laughs> but then we, maybe not oh, nightmare. I'm done with nightmare. It, are you? Is it because oh, of the, yeah. is it because of that 2010 debacle? I like, I think what we have is mm -hmm. what we should just have. I, I personally don't want them to, to do any more nightmare in Elm Street. They will because there's money there. Yeah. Um, but I am like I have no interest. Like I am I love the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Me too. Me too. Um and I just I'm like, there truly is nobody that's Freddy other than Robert. Yeah, Robert England. There just I agree. Isn't. There yeah. just isn't. And to me, it would ruin it. Like I I just I hated that remake. Oh dude, um, I hated it so much. I, hated I just it like this so isn't much. well, we have this. You know, like this is not for me. This is one hundred percent not for me. And I am, I, I, I still am mad. And I, I mentioned Jay from my other the show that I'm on. We had we they cover they were covering something, and he convinced me. He's like, "Oh look, you've never seen the Nightmare on Street remake. We're gonna cover it." Blah blah. And I gave in. It's on me. It's not him. It's my fault. I had avoided it for since it had come out. So it's like a year or so ago. I finally. Oh my god. I it, 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 so you have seen it though, right? When it came out. Yeah. See, one of my one of my good friends, Ron, who's also on that show, Ron Martin, who's a big fan of yours, by the way, and it's actually met you at a con years ago. Um <laughs> he uh oh, hi, Ron. He, uh, hey Ron. Um hi, Ron. and and he he loves Nightmare on Elm Street films as well. He has to this day, and I gotta give that credit, man. He dug in, he's refused to watch it. And he had he he covered he re, they just recently covered all the franchise. He's and he, it was his idea to cover it, except the one caveat was he was not gonna do <laughs> the remake. He's better for it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because it, you know, and that that actually epitomizes what I was talking about earlier. Robert England's performance as Freddy. It's you could call it campy, especially in later films, right? Over the top, but it's sincere. It's honest. There's a there's a genuineness to it that doesn't that doesn't mind being out there. Yeah. The newest nightmare film. They're trying to like grounded in some kind of oh he's really that's what a real burn victim would look and sound like what who wants that nobody wants freddy to be that he's a dream demon you idiot no <laughs>
big mistake. It's a total mistake. But hey, you know, it is what it is. And I have my no one to blame but myself for sitting through that, which I will never do again. I will not own it. I will never watch it again. Yeah. And I mean, look, you know, the people who made it, I know you tried your best, but and I, I think that what sucks is like uh was it um Jackie O'Haley, right? That was the guy who played him. Yeah. He's a he's a great actor. Yes, he is. But that was just not Freddie. And I know there was a rumor that Kevin Bacon was gonna play Freddie at some point. And listen, I think you know. From the studio standpoint, it wasn't about us. Yeah. It's about, hey, let's get a new audience hooked. Yeah, that works out really well every time, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know. But (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. The audience that's non existent, we're going to pander to them. And And so, you know, there's an old rule in business, which is it's more expensive to get new customers than to keep the ones you've already got. I don't know where Hollywood decided, you know, it's a great idea. All these people that love all this crap, eh, F them. We're just going to focus on the new ones. And again, I, it would be different if there was like a payoff in that theory. It just seems so seldom that there is. Yeah. I, I don't get it. But when I don't, I'm not a guy who I don't, I re, I truly do not care about remakes. Like I, I'll watch them. And if I like them, great. If I mm-hmm. don't, I'll move on. Like, yeah. Uh, I am not one of those. Oh, this ruined everything. No, that I don't do that. No either. sense to me. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just another fucking movie that didn't work. Yep. Like, so what? Move on. Yeah. I have what I have and I'll continue to watch that. Yes, I, that I agree with. Yes. That's yeah. another point, a contention that Ron and I have had because he, he also it was a, like, first it's scream. He's a scream fan and he refuses to like, he said, if they, they make another one, he's refusing to watch it because if Stu were to come back, it would destroy the entire franchise. I'm like, come on, man. Well, I just pretend it doesn't exist. I could do that. I could like, it doesn't exist. In my world, like in my world, there's only three Indiana Jones movies. I don't know what you're talking about. In my world, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't need to, like, you know, it's like, sure, that other stuff exists, but not my brain. So it's all good. Yeah. But anyway, so any any other final thoughts before we button up our our malignant bonus? Which, by the way, again, not an '80s movie, but I felt like thematically. It fits nicely with an underappreciated, maybe not as talked about horror oh. flick that wasn't from the actual 80s. It's very new, obviously, but it feels like I swear to God, this is like a like 1989, 1990, man. It's right there. Yeah. Next I to, agree. Uh, and I, you know, it's it's I feel like don't listen to critics, don't listen to yeah. you know the the poo-pooers or anything like if you're at all interested in anything like this Mm -hmm. please give it a shot you know like you may walk away like finding a new classic yeah Um, and to me it is a modern day 80s classic (laughs) yes 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 i would agree with that yep 100 percent. well mr mr james Wan. yeah yeah yes yeah so we have we have him to thank um Go ahead and tell everybody. I, I don't know if you've got any any news you can share one way or the other. I know some things yes, some things no. Um, about projects um, you're working on, that kind of stuff. I mean, we got the sale going on right now. Um, you can go on all my socials, Warlock Home Video um, on Instagram, Christopher J. Seaver on Facebook. Um, YouTube is it crept from the 80s, but we have a sale going on. There's a Halloween sale. Uh, from now until, uh, I believe it's the 16th of October. Okay. Something like that. I'll, um, probably, I'll probably put this out early October, so there'll be another week or two left before. Yeah. I, I mean, you can, like, uh, I do this thing called Saturday Morning Sleepover. Um, it's at my house where I curate 8 to 10 hours of 80s and early 90s television, cartoons, commercials, music videos, oddities. We get about 15, 16 people in the house and we just, that's all we do on a Saturday Mm -hmm. is go back to our childhoods. Um, And I've been recently offering volumes of those and the Halloween Halloween ones, the the first Halloween one did great. This is the second volume of the Halloween one. Um, It's, it's on right now. It's called Halloween Scarathon. That is pre-order. You can pre-order that for 25 and then a bunch of my movies are on sale for 15 each, or you can get a bundle deal. Um, 16 movies on nine Blu-rays for a hundred dollars ship. Nice. Um, but that's out there. You can check that out. 
Um, and then we've got a, uh, in early October, we are going to put up a pre-order for the newest Warlock home video shot on VHS title. Um, it'll be close. You could, you might be able to get it by Halloween, but if not, then it'll be right after Halloween and still, still in the sweet spot. Um, but, uh, yeah, that pre-order will go up on October 7th, right after we shoot it. And I immediately start editing and we'll have it on Blu-ray <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> how long does it, if you don't mind me asking, how long does it usually take you to edit one of those? Um, it just depends. Um, I mean, obviously the shot on VHS stuff is a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Um, so that will probably take me three days. Okay. Um, whereas the normal LBP or Warlock stuff that we spend money on and, you know, our shot 4k and look good, that can take about a week, a week and a half. Um, it really just depends on how jazzed I am about that particular movie. And if I felt good about it, then I'll yeah. get right to it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So, so, so and, uh, when you shoot your shot of video stuff, is it just one camera or do you try to like get ready to use multiple? Just one camera. You just one camera. <laughs> yeah. That's we've awesome. got we've got like a bunch of different VHS style cameras. And you know, some we'll use for traveling shots and then some we'll use for static shots. And yeah. Do you ever go mini D V or do you is it VHS exclusive? Um, for those types, like we went mini D V for uh well, it was supposed to be, you know, considered like um uh, like a high eight type look um, for Death of Lantern 2. Yeah. Um, because it was shot later in the Warlock years. So that's like a 93 or 94. Gotcha. <laughs> you yeah, I mean? gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, now we don't shoot mini DV anymore for anything. Yeah. Is it VHS C or just like actual VHS? Both. 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 Yep. We use both. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I will tell you this now that because I saw the list of all your movies and what the, the hilarious part was. I guess I've now officially known you long enough. It was shocking how few of them I could buy because I already have. <laughs> like I, I've got this shelf with like a bunch of a bunch of shot on video movies and Chris Sieber titles are just right there. Um, but I will absolutely be ordering. I, I was going to ask you because I wasn't sure. So you're saying the Halloween Saturday morning thing that is also a, that's like a separate thing people could buy like they don't have to buy other movies to get that as well no right? okay, no it's a, yeah it's 25 okay. ships you know i will be ordering that and i will absolutely be pre-ordering the warlock title that's a that's a no-brainer duh yeah. yeah i mean that's gonna be fun cool it's gonna be real stupid good well that's what i'm hoping for <laughs> <laughs> so i am the audience for that so i'm i'm looking forward to it man um cool all right well definitely check all that out and then of course uh i guess if people want to like contact you connect with you it's like you said yeah i know youtube obviously uh instagram facebook yeah is, is a fine way as well and uh chris is very responsive i still one of my favorite things is how i sent you that very first email to invite you on possibly one day thinking oh he's a busy guy and I think oh, if I hear back from like sometime next week or two, that'd be cool. And then maybe three and a half minutes later, I get like, F yeah, man, let's <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, I was I, like, I'll talk to anybody. Yeah, I know. You know I, I, you know, and if it's geeky and shit, like even more like, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, hopefully everyone enjoyed this, but yet another bonus episode. I'm, I'm try I basically have a tour. I think I've got a video going out every single day of October, except for the weekends at this point, but awesome. every weekday we got something going out. So, uh, Oh, shout out. Uh, SOV vigilante. Cause I think, uh, was that episode eight was your last one? Are you going to have any, something any like more? That. We are. Yeah. It's just a, you know, timing a schedule thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I figured, but uh, we have some, cool. yeah. And there's people who are sort of on deck to come on. Cool. And talk with us um but yeah that's that is not ending we will we will continue that cool 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 that's awesome awesome all right well uh on that note then i uh, hope everyone out there has a very uh, spooky halloween season and uh yes st stay tuned for more spooky flicks fest action here on the mom and pop video shop youtube channel <laughs>
by subscribing to Mom and Pop Video Shop on YouTube. You can also find Retro Movie Geek on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you dig up your podcasts. The eerie music you heard at the beginning and end of this episode was provided courtesy of Ed and Gavin and their band Midnight Syndicate. We want to thank them for the use of music from their album, The Brimstone Club. Want to sink your unkept and bloody claws into this and all of Midnight Syndicate's beautifully macabre music? Then go to MidnightSyndicate.com And remember, spooky is as spooky does.